Frederick Irving Hertzberg was an American psychologist who became one of the most influential names in business management. Hertzberg proposed the motivation hygiene theory in 1959 in the book The Motivation to Work. The theory is also known as the two-factor theory of job satisfaction. The theory is based on an extensive survey of motivational factors at work and the theory is often used in the context of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Hertzberg reached the conclusion that conditions in the workplace can be divided into two main groups of factors. These are hygiene factors, also sometimes called maintenance factors, and motivator factors. Our starting point is hygiene factors at the bottom of the model. Hygiene fact can only prevent and reduce negative attitudes and dissatisfaction from the employees. The hygiene factors are therefore the difference between dissatisfied and not dissatisfied. When management covers hygiene factors, they do not create satisfaction and thereby motivation. They only ensure that the employees are not dissatisfied. The employees will come to work every day, but will not be motivated to make any extra effort in their work. The employees' hygiene factors have to be covered before you can move on to the next level, which is the motivator factors at the top of the model. Motivator factors can create a positive attitude and satisfaction from an individual employee. The motivator factors are therefore the difference between not satisfied and satisfied. When management uses the motivator factors in the right way, they can give the individual employee the feeling that they have accomplished something. They have made a difference. Hertzberg two-factor theory clearly shows that hygiene factors cannot create motivation. They can only prevent and reduce dissatisfaction and negative attitudes. Hygiene factors are characterized as extrinsic components of job design. It is about the surroundings of the job. This is something that the employee expects will be properly organized. Motivation factors create positive attitudes towards work, but it requires the presence of motivational factors that are important to the individual employee. Motivators are intrinsic to the job itself and thereby about the individual employee satisfaction. Hygiene factors must be met first. There must be no dissatisfaction among the employees. Only then can you work on their motivation factors. Now we shall review both the hygiene factors and the motivator factors which Hertzberg identified in his study. It is logical to start with hygiene factors, since we cannot use motivator factors before the hygiene factors are met. Job security. The organization must provide job security to the employees. It creates great dissatisfaction and negative attitudes if employees are afraid of being dismissed. Status. The employee's status within the organization should be recognized and maintained. Management must be aware that an employee who feels demoted in a restructuring of the company is very dissatisfied. Interpersonal relations. The relationship of the employees with his peers, superiors and subordinates should be appropriate and acceptable. There should be no conflict or humiliation element present. The personal life of the employee affects the person's attitude towards work. Management must be aware of this aspect, and the employees should be offered health care plans, benefits for the family members, 
employee help programs, etc. The pay or salary structure should be appropriate and reasonable. It must be equal and competitive to those in the same industry in the same domain. The salary should also correspond to the cost of living, otherwise it affects the previous factor, personal life. Physical working conditions. The working conditions should be safe, clean and hygienic. The workplace's equipment should be modern and well maintained. The supervisors or management must set the direction for the company and how the employee fits into the company's overall plan. Otherwise, the employee will be uncertain and therefore negative. Company policies and administrative policies. The company policies should not be too rigid. They should be fair and clear. They should include flexible working hours, dress code, breaks, vacation, etc. Now we will review motivator factors. Growth opportunities. There must be growth opportunities in an organization to motivate the employees to perform well. The employee must have the opportunity to develop both professionally and personally in their work. Advancement opportunities. Many employees want to make a career at work. Therefore, there must be advancement opportunities in the organization. As a manager, you should be aware of the difference of growth and advancement factors. Not all employees want to advance to a higher level in the company. They prefer growth opportunities, not advancement opportunities. Responsibility The employees must hold themselves responsible for their work. Their managers should give them ownership of the work. They should minimize control but retain accountability. Meaningfulness of the work The work itself should be meaningful, interesting and challenging for the employee to ensure they perform and are motivated. Recognition The employees should be praised and recognised for their accomplishments by their managers or their colleagues in the group. Recognition is always positive if it is given sincerely from people you respect. Sense of achievement The employees must have a sense of achievement. The employee must have the opportunity to accomplish a difficult job successfully, typically by effort, courage or skill. A craftsman finishing a difficult job or a salesman successfully winning a difficult order then they will feel that they have achieved something. Now we shall review how you, as the manager, can use the model in respect of your employees. You need to adopt a two-stage process to motivate people. Firstly, you need to eliminate any dissatisfaction they're experiencing. Secondly you need to help them to achieve satisfaction. To get rid of factors that dissatisfy your employees, you need to fix poor and obstructive company policies. Provide effective and supportive and non-intrusive supervision. Create and support a culture of respect and dignity for all team members. Ensure that wages are competitive when compared to similar industries and positions. Build job status by providing meaningful work for all positions. Provide job security, not only by telling them that you will not dismiss people. You must make an effort to keep your employees by retaining and redeployment to other jobs. You have to show that you take job security seriously. All of these actions help you eliminate job dissatisfaction in your organization and there's no point 
trying to motivate people until these issues are out of the way. Now you have to turn your attention to building job satisfaction for your employees. Things to consider include provide opportunities for achievement and opportunities to advance in the company through internal promotions. Recognize people's contributions. You must remember to do this regularly. Create work that is rewarding and that matches people's skills and abilities. Give as much responsibility to each team member as possible. Offer training and development opportunities so that people can pursue the jobs they want within the company. Now we shall review a criticism of the model. The two-factor theory overlooks situational variables. The theory does not take into account that employees often have individual hygiene and motivational factors. In reality, you'll need different strokes for different folks. In other words, different people will perceive different issues and will be motivated by different things. Hertzberg assumed a correlation between satisfaction and productivity, but research conducted by Hertzberg emphasized satisfaction and ignored productivity. No comprehensive measure of satisfaction was used. An employee may find his job acceptable despite the fact that he may hate part of his job. You love your job as a manager, but you hate to dismiss people. The theory was developed by looking only at white-collar workers. Today, the theory is applied to white-collar workers as well as blue-collar workers. Everybody assumes that the two groups have identical motivator factors and hygiene factors. Even though Hertzberg's theory in some respects lacks reliability, it is today a very accepted theory. It provides a quick understanding of hygiene factors and motivator factors, and the theory has proven to be a useful tool in the everyday work of management.